a number into a string, but only when it's being combined with something else. So for instance, here we are changing the number four, which is an integer into a string. So we get high four. So that's useful if you are combining numbers with strings, but not so useful if you want them just stand alone. So what I'm going to do is have a look at two functions that can do this. So the first one is str. So this is a standard convert into string. When I was programming in the 1980s, this was my base, my go-to function. However, it's not quite as useful, more flexible than it used to be, but not quite as useful as it was previously when I was using it in the 1980s. So this is my string. And you can see there's a lot of white space at the beginning. So if I put, for instance, hi, and then this string, and then there, you can see that we've got all of this space right at the beginning. And also the number itself has been converted into an integer. So what's happening here? Well, it's converted into a string of 10 characters with zero decimal places. Suppose I don't want a string of 10 characters. Well, I can specify how many characters I do want using this optional second argument. So I want three characters. And so now we can see everything really tight up close. What happens if I say I just want one character? Can I express 123 in one character? The answer is no. So the computer says, I can't do anything here. I'll just put a star and asterisk. Okay, but I want my decimal places. So let's make it six characters long. Oh, it's still not there. No decimal places. And that's when we need to use the optional third argument, which is number of decimal places. So I can say, okay, I want it to be of length six. So I've got six digits and I want it to be one decimal place. Oh, right. Well, if I say three decimal places, then we'll have everything shown. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the answer is no, we won't. Because this six doesn't show number of digits, it shows number of characters. And this decimal separator is one character. So I will need to change this to seven length long and three decimal places. What happens if I expand this to say four decimal places? Well, nothing because I can't fit four decimal places into this length. So if I change this to eight characters, you can see we have a zero at the front. So str, it converts a number into a string, but it doesn't really do that that well because I need to know how long it's going to be and I need to know how many decimal places and quite often I don't have that information. So it was my go-to function in the 1980s, it isn't now. Instead, I have format. So format, obviously it takes a initial value. So here is my value. So I'm going to say it's a float that just gives me a wide range of things I can do. And I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, dot, eight, nine. So the value that I'm going to use is right here at the beginning. Now the next thing I need is the formatting. So my formatting, I'm going to declare it here. And I'm going to say it's a varchar 20. And my initial formatting is going to be zero. So you can see how I'm using it. I'm putting the value in first and then the formatting. So we have one, two, three, four, five, eight, because it rounds it up in this case, or rounds down and the formatting is zero. Now, what is this formatting? Well, this formatting could be the formatting that you use in Excel when you go to custom formatting. So you can see if I put in a comma, which is the thousand separator and zero, 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 then we now have one comma, two, three, four, comma, five, six, eight. But hang on, you might be saying, I don't live in a culture which uses a comma. I use a full stop, a dot. And we can replicate this by having a third optional argument. And this would be the culture. So this particular culture is the French of France. So it could be the French of 
Canada, for instance, it could be the Spanish of Mexico. Now, this is why I'm using variables for this. So when I change what's here, we're going to see what it is in the English. That is to say the American culture and then in the French culture at the same time. So you can see, even though I'm using a comma as a thousand separator, because that's what you do in Excel, it gets interpreted in the French culture as spaces. So what about if I want to put in decimal places? Well, I put in a dot and then the number of decimal places required. And again, we have a dot in the English and a comma in the French. So I will add these column names so you can see clearly what's going on. So let's put in a few more decimal places. And you can see if I've got fewer decimal places in my value than what's in my string, it will put in zeros. If I didn't want that, then I can put in hashes. So this is the pound sign, it's also known as. So what the pound sign, the hash, it means put in a zero or the right value. But if you don't have any need for it, if you don't have any values, don't put anything in, it's optional. So that's much better if you don't need everything to line up with lots of zeros. Now you can use other things. For instance, if I used a percentage, what happens then is that this figure gets multiplied by a hundred. And so I have 123 million. 456,789 and zero fraction. So this formatting could be what you use in the Excel custom formatting. But what else could it be? It could also be a formatting used in .NET. And we're going to see what that can be. So the first one is the letter C. C stands for currency. So this will be formatted as your local currency. So you can see it is dollars in England or America and euros in France with the euro coming at the end, which is what happens in the French France. If I was to change this to an English France, then the euro would be right at the beginning. Now I can specify how many decimal places I want. So it could be a letter followed by a number or it could be a letter alone. So if I say C1, then that says one decimal place. So if I say C5, then that's five decimal places. Now D is for decimal. But despite the name of decimal, it can't actually handle floats. So it's got to be an integer. So what does D show? Well, D just shows your integer, but then it can show how many places you need. So maybe you need to show nine places. So that's what D is. It's not often used. And also not often used is E. E is for exponential, also known as scientific. So this is one point lots of numbers times 10 to the power of six. Not often used. F is for floating point numbers. So here you can see I have a floating point number, no commas, no thousand separators. And I need to change this back to a float. And we have the number of decimal places required. Again, I can say F1, I can say F5, I can say how many decimal places I need. G, general, again, not often used. It is just the fixed point that we've previously seen with F. And incidentally, it could be a capital F, it could be a small case F, or it could be the exponential or scientific that we saw with E, whichever is shorter. So I, again, wouldn't choose this. You don't actually know what the output's going to be, whether it's going to be fixed, notation or scientific. And the last big one I want to show you is N. So N shows a number with the thousand separator. So that's different to F, which shows it without. And again, you can say, I want N1, N5. There are other things. For example, P, which again is a percentage. But I think the main .NET ones you're going to be using are C for currency, F for fixed point, and N for a number with the group and decimal separators. 
So in this video, we've had a look at two different ways of formatting. We've had a look at STR. So that allows us to take a number with a particular length and a particular number of decimal places. And then we've got format, which doesn't require us to know the length, but we can put in currency, fixed point or number with the thousands and decimal separators. And we can say how many decimal places we want by putting it after the letter. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button and why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.